Thanks for joining me again. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, pasteurization and the process that we use. Um, right now I have a 300 gallon stock tank that's behind me that uh, we use and um, slowly making improvements to their overall pasteurization system as we go. Um, right now since this is a 300 gallon tank what we have is uh, some insulation around it. Um, basically just cotton battings um, that we've had from other projects. And then, uh, the nice thing about this is you can get a 300 gallon stock tank pretty much any farm supply store that are uh, just stock water tanks uh, measures two feet by two feet by eight feet um, you just use kind of a combination of uh, some plywood for a lid some plastic sheeting you know, some plastic poly tarp and uh, just some extra insulation around the edges and it makes a really nice seal so uh, today i'm actually using a, a new system of an on-demand hot water heater we decided to make an investment in previously, which you can actually still see here below, which I'll show you, um, are actually just some uh, propane tanks that we've used. So we've had uh, basically a 40,000 BTU and roughly a 60,000 BTU. You can get turkey burner at your uh, local Walmart or something along those lines, and using that to heat the entire stock tank. Uh, the major limitation has been it takes such a long period of time. Um, it really ends up being about a five or six hour process to heat water up to that 150 uh, temperature range. And so uh, it just it, every time we go to do this, it's just such an undertaking. It ends up chewing up a whole day. Um, so literally, again, I think I mentioned this in another section of the video, is uh, it, it's half of the amount of time for the entire process. Um, you know, bagging, making columns isn't nearly as uh, time intensive or resource intensive as, um, you know, firing uh, firing up the pasteurizer and so we're using about half the capacity maybe more like two-thirds um, running this one so we can actually dump an entire hundred pounds of dry straw in here um, with about 150 gallons of water and uh, it works out really well and uh, you can do this as many times during a week as you'd like and uh, you can produce a lot of mushrooms um, definitely get yourself to kind of that uh, mid-size uh, kind of commercial range I'm sure you could be producing a few hundred pounds a week doing something like this um, no problem, and that's kind of where we're at right now is, uh, uh, you know, being able to do 100 pounds of dry straw at a crack. And then now with the on-demand hot water heater, we're knocking this down to about a three or four hour process total from the time we weigh straw, um, pasteurize it, pull it out, uh, inoculate it, and bag it. Uh, ends up being about, uh, about three, three and a half hours. So uh, it's pretty great right now and uh, something we just continue to share. Okay, so... Here's the uh, on-demand hot water heater that I'm using right now. Um, super happy having this system. Um, I was just describing a few minutes ago that uh, using a couple burners, they're very inefficient and it takes a long period of time where it takes five to six hours to bring the amount of water that I'm using up to temperature um, to be able to pasteurize my straw. Um, with this system, I'm looking at right now about an hour and a half, um, maybe slightly under to bring, get uh, a full 150 gallons up to temp. So all the water coming out right now is actually um, coming out about 172 degrees, which is more than enough. The reason I'm using a higher temperature um, than kind of that 150 mark is uh, to account for any heat loss. So I'm making sure that I'm buffering in enough uh, uh, temperature that as it's traversing from the system, um, which is out towards the bottom and then running to my tank, that uh, I can account for some, uh, some thermal loss that way and then also just from the tank itself as it continues to be out here in this cold weather, which today it's not too bad, only being about uh, you know, close to 40 degrees, which is pretty good weather for um, towards the end of December up here in Wisconsin. Uh, you know, just factoring in that, uh, that heat loss. So uh, you have your kind of your hot water intake, which is coming from the agriculture meter that we have. Uh, so it's cheap water. Um, and then we have uh, basically the hot water output there on the, on the left. Um, and I can kind of show you here. So. Essentially what I have towards the bottom here, so you have your gas, uh, you have your cold water and intake, and then this is where the hot water is coming out. And then up here you have the main unit. Uh, this unit's actually produced by uh, Wyewela, I think is how it's pronounced. Uh, it's 200,000 BTU, more of a commercial unit. It'll actually go above 120, um, so you can uh, go all the way up to 180 with this unit. Um, and then towards the top you have kind of a remote control. You can see it's set for 180. What I'm actually getting out of it is about 172. Um, which is at, uh, I think we're, I'm still doing the math on it right now. I have a timer running to, um, uh, I guess, calculate my gallons per minute. So this is actually the first day I've been using it. Um, so far I've been using burners. 
um, but this is a major improvement where I can, like I said, on-demand hot water, it's, uh, it's fantastic. This is going to save so much time. Literally the entire process of pasteurizing and making mushrooms in general, literally half of my time goes to heating up water. So of course you can do other things while you're doing it, but uh, having hot water, is, it's, it's such a huge time consuming thing. The pasteurization process was one of those pinch points that we needed to make a, an investment and a major improvement in the time it takes to do this, this process. Bagging, you know, all those types of things, getting them into columns, not nearly as uh, time consuming as pasteurization. So. Something I've shared there. So hot water, um, it, it was worth spending the money on getting a, more of a commercial unit for this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a temperature reading on this guy. So we're gonna pull the lid off. Uh, my wife Carrie's gonna help me and uh, we're gonna get this in there. So we have uh, 80 pounds of straw behind us now and then we're gonna get this, uh, get this off. So I guess at this point, I'm not as worried about heat loss as uh, you're going to lose some anyway. Um, one of the goals of having the water coming out on demand is that we're getting it high enough that we can deal with any heat loss. I hope you, hope you can still see me through this vapor cloud, but uh, yeah, it looks like we're still doing good. Coming out of the tap, measuring it, we were getting about 172, and then over this uh, about an hour of burning, um, we're still at about 160, so once we get the straw in there, it'll probably drop to 150, and that'll give us a good, uh, you know, 20 degrees to work with, um, about or about 19 degrees above that 131 that uh, we don't want to go below. So should be good. Let's waste our straw out there. Oops. Now we just got to get it down in there. Uh, having some uh, patio blocks or something along those lines, we have some of those 60 inch patio blocks which work awesome in here where you can just put them on top and um, help press it down. So, pause it and then we'll go through, get the top back on and move on. And we'll probably show you a little bit more of actually getting it out and once we draw it up or uh, start cooling it off. Okay, so we just got most of the straw in here. Um, just wanted to share with you, uh, kind of getting it packed down. Um, it is important, I think, to wear some uh, heavy duty gloves or something, because even working with 150, 160 degree water, um, you can give yourself a pretty good scald. And uh, some second degree burn. So I just, like I was mentioning using these patio blocks, and I also use some mesh grating, which will kind of evenly distribute across the straw and allow you to get it down in the water, so. A little bit more of a manual process here, just kind of pushing it down. Once the straw gets kind of wet, and it'll break down and uh, kind of let all that air out and then uh, sit a little bit better and then we'll get it completely submerged. And so right now we're actually working with about 110 pounds of straw. I like to just give myself a little extra, just because you lose a little bit here and there. And, never hurts to make more mushrooms. 